Welcome to the next video in the evolution unit. In this video, we'll be looking at the dot point from the Life on Earth syllabus 8.4.3b. Analyze information from secondary sources to discuss the diverse environments that living things occupy today and use available evidence to describe possible alternative environments in which life may have originated. So we're going to have a look at a few of the prokaryotes that we've already looked at throughout this topic in terms of their past and present environments so that we're able to compare the two. So the archaea bacteria are capable of living in very hostile environments, were probably well adapted to survive the harsh, oxygen-free conditions prevailing on Earth several billion years ago. Examples of where they may have been found include the hot waters of deep sea vents, hot acidic bodies of water, and areas of extremely high salinity. Archaea bacteria can be found living in similar areas today, although they are not as widespread as they would have, as they would have been during the early history of the Earth. Now, methanogens, for instance, cannot live in the presence of oxygen, as we've already looked at, and are now restricted to anaerobic conditions of swamps, bogs, and sewerage, or in the digestive tracts of animals. They can also be found in hydrothermal vents at temperatures of up to 100 degrees Celsius. The fact that sulfur and iron bacteria have been found in the hot waters of the deep sea vents also lend support to the hypothesis that similar archaea bacteria in these areas were the, for, the first life forms on Earth. The U bacteria also include chemosynthetic and heterotrophic forms that can survive in the absence of oxygen, and these, along with oxygen-dependent forms, were probably widespread in ancient environments on Earth. Many types of U bacteria can be found in a wide range of environments today. Fossil evidence has shown that the cyanobacteria, the first photosynthesizing organisms, were present in early environments as filamentous varieties or as part of stromatolite formations. Today, filamentous cyanobacteria are found mostly in aquatic habitats, while other species still form stromatolites in marine environments. Some varieties of cyanobacteria can also be found in symbiotic relationships with fungi in lichen. Although nitrogen-fixing bacteria are found today in leguminous flowering plants such as peas and beans, these were not present during the early part of Earth's history. Early nitrogen-fixing bacteria were therefore limited to more primitive plants containing root nodules such as cycads and water ferns. Other nitrogen-fixing bacteria, including some single-celled cyanobacteria, probably lived independently in the soil of ancient environments, and free-living nitrogen fixers such as those um, such as these, sorry, are still present in the soil today. So it is generally assumed that the first living cells formed in the oceans of primitive Earth, which we've looked at a few times now with the idea of the prebiotic soup, which then Yuri and Miller tested to find that uh, organic molecules such as sugars and amino acids were able to form from these, and they believed that these could have formed cells. However, the archaea that are around today inhibit inhabit a huge range of extreme environments on Earth. So could this mean that it was in one of these extreme environments that life on Earth first began? So what we're going to do is have a look at a couple of different scenarios which could lead to possible environments in which life possibly began. So the first one is the clay sediments scenario. So some scientists have pointed to the impressive catalytic properties of clay minerals called zeolites, which can attract organic molecules and cause chemical reactions to occur, including a reaction known as poly uh, poly polymerization, which is an essential reaction to make the large complex molecules of life. So a couple of those words in there that we might not be sure of. Catalytic means that it's a substance that's able to speed up a chemical reaction and polymerization is a reaction that occurs when smaller units are joined together to make longer chain molecules. So our amino acids are polymers, they join together to form proteins which are large complex molecules of life. So they suggest that perhaps the first living cells began in zeolite clay sediments where the necessary reactions of life could get some help from the clay itself. This might have happened deep in the earth, and it is interesting to note that some archaea types are found thriving, although in small numbers, deep in the rocks of the crust. So the next one is the volcanic vent scenario. So we believe that the primitive earth of three to four billion years ago was a lot hotter than today, and that volcanic activity was widespread. 
The presence of thermoacidophiles in modern hot springs proved that life can thrive in such conditions, so maybe that's where life began. And another scenario is the ice concentration scenario. Some scientists have doubts that the organic chemical soup of the oceans could ever have been concentrated enough in Yuri and Miller's chemicals for enough chemicals to form microspheres and eventually leaving cells. Experiments show that as seawater freezes, the dissolved chemicals can be pushed together into small zones of very high concentrations. Some scientists suggest that life began in pools of water that periodically froze and remelted. With each freezing cycle, it could have increased the concentration of chemicals so that suitable microspheres may have been able to form. So perhaps life, of, life could have begun in any of these places or for all we know, somewhere else. Only with further research into this area will we actually know the answer to the question. And the beauty is at this point, we don't need to know the actual answer to the question. We just need to be able to identify evidence or identify research into trying to find evidence to uh, predict where life on earth may have begun. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.